Hi, welcome back to the shop. We last left off installing our new gantry support bracket on that side of the printer. Now it's time we make a bracket for this side of the printer out of this piece of aluminum. So I'm gonna bring you over to the milling machine and we're gonna start cutting some features into this to get it more closely resembling the final product. So come on over. So I've got my material chucked up in the vise, propped up on a couple of parallels. I've already gone ahead and cut this square and parallel from its raw stock. Now all I need to do is cut it down to size. The tool I'm using is a three inch face mill. The reason why I use a tool like this is because it can cut the entire width of this part in one pass and it leaves a very nice surface finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this side a quick skim pass to refresh the surface finish. This block of material has gotten thrown around the shop a little bit recently and it's gotten a bit dinged up and I want this part to look as nice as possible. So now it's time to cut this width to final size. If you look at our blueprint, you can see that the overall dimensions are 2.756 by 3.476 by 2.059 inches. These numbers may seem arbitrary at first, but they're converted from metric because the printer is assembled with metric components and it prints in metric units. It was easier for me to draw the part in metric to begin with and just have the software converted to inches for me when I dimension the final part. Now that we know that this measurement, according to the drawing, needs to be 2.059 inches, we could begin in taking some material off. The first step is to make a shallow pass across this surface in order to get ourselves a good zero between the tool and the part, and we'll be able to zero out our z-axis dial. Now I can go ahead and zero the dial for my z-axis. Now it's time to measure this thickness to know exactly how much material we need to remove. For that, I'm gonna be using this caliper tool. These things, when used properly, can be pretty accurate within one or two thousandths of an inch, and that's plenty precise for what I'm doing here. Plus, they have a nice trick up their sleeve. If you set it to your desired measurement, and press the zero absolute button. Now, when you measure that, it's gonna tell you how much material you'll need to remove. And it looks like 0 0.362 inches need to come off. I'm gonna do this in 50,000 increments until I get to where I can do a finish pass. I say that looks pretty good, but now I have a large mess to clean up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done off camera and then we'll finish up the other four sides. Probably give you a time lapse of that just to make this go a little faster.
next step will be to cut this large portion off here 45 degrees from the bottom of the part. Normally you'd use an angle block to get it set up in the vise, but I don't have that. But I do have a speed square and that will work just fine for what I'm trying to do. First, I need to mark my depth of cut before I put it in the vise. Now that I have the part cut out to its basic final shape, it's time to start working on some of the more complicated features. It's going to require some different tooling, so I'm going to change that around and we'll get going. Now I'm going to use my edge finder to line up the rotating axis of the mill head to this corner of the part. That gives me a good zero reference, so I know where I'm at in relationship to the center line of the mill, the part, and the dimensions that I'm gonna be using to make the cuts that I gotta make. Okay, so I've got the zero point set here to this corner of the part and the dials on the horizontal axes of the mill zeroed. If you're curious about the proper way to use an edge finder, I've made a video about that and I will leave a link to it in the description below. But now it's time to get a cutting tool chucked up and we can start making some more chips. For this operation, I'm gonna be using a 3 8 inch, two flute, 45 degree twist, carbide end mill. This is specifically made for doing these type of operations on aluminum. To get my zero for my Z axis or my up and down, I'm just going to use the quill to bring this tool down to touch off on the bottom of this part. Now I've got all three dials zeroed to this very corner of this part. Now it's time for the fun part, cutting out some metal and not screwing this thing up. Now on my blueprint, I have made dimensions to account for the offset of the radius of this tool, but for my roughing cut, I'm gonna go off of that by 20 thousandths of an inch, and then I can go in and do a finish pass afterwards. So it's been six days since I finished this operation, and in that time, winter has come, hence the sweater. 
It's about 20 degrees colder in my garage. Now I know all you sticklers out there for safety are gonna mention that you're not supposed to be wearing long sleeves when working with this kind of machinery. I know I've heard the same thing and I accept the risk. I will be as cautious as I possibly can. But for now, we need to continue on with this so I can get this video out. I've got my roughing pass cut out for this pocket. Now all I need to do is get rid of this extra material and then do the finish pass. This concludes part two of this video series. This is the only end mill that I have of this size and I bought it specifically for doing this part. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve and I don't think the tool store is going to be open, nor do I have time to go. So after the holidays, I'm going to have to go and get me a new one of these, probably pick up two of them to finish this part. If you like what you see here, please subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. And as always, thanks for watching.